G'day folks, it's a cool May morning and I've headed back down to Mud Marlin Springs to see if I can catch some more European carp. Hey you! You're watching Robbie Fishing. Now you may remember this spot from a video that I filmed a few weeks ago. I was using worms and corn. I had my corn out there and my worms out there and every single bit of action that I had for that morning was on the corn. So today I'm using two rods with corn on each, one with a Pat Noster rig, one with a bubble float. Well, here's my Pat Noster rig. It's a, uh, I'm, caught it. I'm snagged before I even put my line in here. All right, it is a number one Robbie Alexander signature series sinker that was made for me by Matt Furling and his sons a couple of years ago. And I've got one, two, three, four, six corn kernels threaded under the one hook. They can go out there. That's exactly what I was doing, it's the exact same setup as when I was here a couple of weeks ago. Same rod, that may have been a bigger sinker that day. Anyway, we're in the same spot with the same bait. Rod number two is different, this time I'm using a bubble float. I've got a bubble float and I've got same size hook with about one, two, three, four, five corn kernels on it. But I've done something a little bit different this time. I've put a little sinker, I've tied a sinker in the line just under the float. That's just to take a bit of buoyancy out of the float and also assist with casting distance. The downside to having that actually tied there is that I can't, uh, I can't slide it up and down. I probably should have used a little bit of valve rubber, valve rubber and a match. I've got some in my tackle box, but anyway, that's the rig I'm using. Let me try and catch anything. That can go just out there. This rod doesn't cast as far, it's in desperate need of new line. It makes sense to have the float a bit closer in because it's easier to see. Check this out, I've just gone and set up my time lapse camera down there on that stump. I don't know what it's gonna, how it's gonna turn out. Depends what happens with the clouds, I guess. But look at this. There's no mistaking what sort of skin that's off. <laughs> In fact, I think the snake's still in it. It's a dead black snake. We died of cold. <laughs> Something really bizarre happened. I just happened to look over and my float moved about four inches. It just sort of went sideways. But it didn't make any ripples or bounce or anything. Just had some really small rings form around me. There we go. There's something playing with that corn under that float. The float's moving a little bit, it's definitely a nibble of some kind. This is a bigger float than what I normally use. When I'm fishing for silver perch and redfin, I use a really small float, but this is quite a bit bigger. So it's probably a bit more buoyant. The sinker might be taking a bit of that buoyancy away though, hopefully. As soon as I got up, it stopped. Isn't that ironic? <laughs> Don't you think? A little too ironic. Ooh, whoa, whoa, whoa. It's just, as soon as I sat down, it started moving again. It's getting towed. Maybe it's a really small carp that just can't pull it under. Look, whatever it is, it's, it's, it's bouncing. It's whatever it is, it just... Something's playing with it. It's still getting moved around. It's got to keep me on that rod. I reckon he's got that. Got him. I was wrong when I said a really small carp. It's a wonder he couldn't pull it under. I don't think it's a monster. But it's a wonder that it couldn't pull the float under. Unless it just wasn't biting very hard. Maybe it was just uh, nibbling. <laughs> I just remembered something. I haven't got my other net put together yet. It certainly feels quite heavy. It feels like a, probably a, a 50. I'm going to go over here. Get Lynette and uh, put it together without losing the fish somehow. All right, go. It doesn't go in properly because I hit a carp on the head with it a while back. Now, now it's out completely. But I've still got the fish, still got the fish. It's all happening. Net's ready, still got the fish. I'm about to catch a carp. All right. Gee whiz, it's not fighting very hard. I wonder if the cooler water just takes away a fair bit of the fighting power. 
it was uh last time i come here we were getting minimums of four or five degrees with a couple down around one or two yesterday in the morning before it was minus three degrees this morning it was only about plus five it was a mild morning but things have certainly cooled down since the last time i was here yeah you know, folks i called it maybe it's too small to pull the fellow the float under <laughs> i called it but i didn't call it very well all right come on here we go in the net in the net gotcha yes we are on the board this is fat that is fatter than me Right, there you go, folks. I'll get him out, get a measure, get a pick, then get to work. I called it at around 50-ish. I reckon about 53. I'll go at 55. 54. 54 centimetres of very fat mud marlin about to be removed from the system. Beauty. Now that I've got Alanis Morissette stuck in my head, isn't it ironic, don't you think? I'll show you what the float I'm using. That's me rig. I've got it red side up because I like that. These are designed to go white side up or red side up, but I like red side up. That's the float that I normally use when I'm chasing silver perch or red fin. And the thought was I'll use a slightly bigger one because I'll carp lock it just to make that disappear. At least if that's bobbing, it's going to send out rings and make it easier to detect a bite. Now that big carp made that float move less than what the little weeny silver perch do with the little float. Isn't that amazing? The sinker is just to remove a bit of buoyancy and also help me with casting distance. And then me corn about a metre down the line. Right, let's put it back in. There's not a second to lose. It's like rain on your wedding day. There we go. Perfect. Traffic jam when you're already late. And I'm smoking sign on your cigarette break. There must be some pretty serious earthworks going on. I can hear lots of noise coming from over that way. But anyway, I just want to show you something about the floats. I've actually filmed this scene twice already, but every time I film it, I start getting a nibble on my float. Right, this is the float that I just showed you. That's what I use for redfin and silver perch. I held it up for comparison. They're my favorite types of floats. This is a basic bubble float. I have also used these for redfin and silver perch fishing. These are the shore catch floats. You put the line through there, then this little cone shaped stick goes in, pins the line. So all you gotta do is take that out, slide it up and down the line to where you want it, pin it. Very good design, but I find these tangle a lot more than what these do these you can have red side up if it's if it's really bright and it's hard to see the white or if it's getting dark you can have white side up and it's easier to see and usually it'll sit that way when it's white side up and you'll see both with that it's always that side up but it's bright orange but the issue that i have with it is that quite often the line wraps around there and you get tangles and sometimes when you catch the fish it's all wrapped around and tangled and I just think I much prefer this type of float. There are dozens of different types of floats, pencil floats, quill floats. The serious float fishermen have so many different rigs. They have rigs with little split shot sinkers and this and that and the other. and Just enough for the float to be just buoyant. So the slightest little nibble will pull it under and the fish will feel nothing. And a lot of people like that rig, particularly trout fishermen where trout can feel the resistance and then leave. But that sort of stuff, it's great for those that like it. But it's not for me. I'm too simple. I just like simple and basic. Throw the old red and white bubble float on. If that doesn't work, go to a sinker. <laughs> right, my float's bouncing around a bit out here again. Come on. Come on! <laughs> there it goes. Look, 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 look. Oh, it's, it's gone under. It's, 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 it's bobbing. It's under, it's under, it's under. Got him! Oh, I thought I lost him then for a minute. The line went really slack. I think he just shook his head in my direction. This other rod over here hasn't had a touch and I've had a number of nibbles on the float. Isn't that amazing? Last week it was all that rod. This one had a different bait last week though, it had worms. This time around I've uh, got corn on both. This one feels like it might be a bit heavier. We'll find out in a minute. Yeah, I think he's quite a bit bigger. The last one was 54 if I remember rightly. I reckon this one's got to be up around the 58 mark. I was worried that the lack of sun and being so overcast might uh, 
might slow the fishing down or make it bad fishing but it hasn't doesn't seem to have although I do think this persistent white sky is going to make my time lapse unusable I'm filming a time lapse but you might not get to see it because it might be boring as batshit right come on come on come on come on in you get in you get I want to measure you got him all right yes now I reckon that's I'll get a good look when he gets out of the net but I reckon it's got to be pushing uh it's got to be pushing 60 this one already all right that has got to be the other one was 54 he's, he's 58 he's, he's a 58 centimeter carp if I didn't have a tape measure I'd say I caught a 58 centimeter carp hey 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 mate mate it's all good it's all good it's all good don't trust anything I'm about to say you're gonna be just fine mate he is 58 I kid you not look I put me th oh no 56 and I can go back a bit because the red one goes back now he is 57 and a bit the eyeometer is in good form I'll get a photo Just while I'm re-rigging my float, a small fish has jumped out here. One thing I have noticed, there is a lot of life in this lagoon. Considering it's the middle of May, there's bubbles coming up everywhere. I've seen a number of small fish jump. I've seen some big ripples around the edges of the lagoon. One right here in front of me just before, where I suspect there's been a carp just sort of feeding around the edge. Considering it's been minus three the last couple of nights, there just seems to be a lot of something ripples over there as well. There just, there just seems to be a lot of life. The ecosystem here, here seems to be quite active for this time of the year. My float's being moved again. Something just, there it goes. It's just being pulled up straight up, upstream. There is no upstream. It's in a lagoon, you idiot. It's still being pulled. I've got this fish. Got him. Oh, it's only been about two minutes since the last one. They're loving the corn under the float, but for some reason I can't get a bite on this other rod here. I tell you what I have noticed, there's a lot of little fish jumping and I just noticed now the one that jumped in front of me about two minutes ago was bright yellow I reckon they're a little carp I was fishing in a different lagoon recently with my mate Pratty you, would have, you may have seen the video, had the kingfishers that was a much smaller lagoon than this but actually deeper and I caught a carp about that long, a real little one I reckon this lagoon's teeming with them because I've seen quite a few jumping while I've been sitting here so while I'm doing the right thing and taking these big ones out I think the, uh, the next generation is not too far behind them. I haven't got COVID. I'm just, I get a bit of hay fever from time to time. So they calm down. I can't blame the worms this time because I'm not using any. <laughs> Maybe I'm allergic to corn. Maybe I'm allergic to the three inches of dust on the dashboard of my car. A lot smaller this one. Smaller but more lively. I don't reckon this one would even be 50. Where's me net? Alright. The first one didn't bite very hard and didn't fight very hard. The second one bit much harder and fought okay. And this one bit harder and he's fighting the best out of all of them. Come on, come on, quick, in you get, in you get, in you get, and you're in. This is a smaller one. Yeah, he's probably still pushing 50. Alright, I reckon he's still... Alright, the eyeometer says 51. What was the first one? 54. 51 is the call. 53. Similar to the first one. Skinnier than the first one, though. That was a much fatter fish. He's a bit unfair, 52 and a half. 52 and a half. Beautiful, kind of. Right, well those last two carp came in quick succession. As I cast this out, I'd just like to give a big shout out to a good friend of mine, Sam Murdoch. Check out Sam's YouTube channel. It's called Cracking the Code. Well, I might be cracking the code fishing. Check out cracking the code on YouTube. Sam's a good friend of mine. He, uh, Sam's very, very tall. His official height is six foot eleven, ten and a half. He's enormous. 
Andy kindly invited me to go kayak fishing this week and I would have loved to have but I've actually got or had or in the middle of a very very busy week with lots of meetings I've got tradesmen coming over to do stuff I've just had uh, not much time to get out this week so Big Sam sorry I couldn't make it maybe one other time and folks check out cracking the code on YouTube Sam's been catching some really nice red fin from red fin from his kayak lately well folks talk about an epic bite window I caught none for a while then I caught three in quick succession and haven't had a single bite for the last hour and a half and the same thing happened last time I was here you definitely got to be there during the bite window thanks very much for watching I hope you've enjoyed this video if you have why not give it a big fat thumbs up hit the subscribe button and hopefully I'll see you in my next video